Don't forget. Okay, captured. Yeah, uh, so Anne, real quick, um, unmute yourself. What part of Florida did you move to? To Newberry, so it is, it's like two hours away from any any beach, you know. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. On, and yeah. It's near um, like Gain the Gainesville area where the University of Florida, the, the students okay. are and everything. Okay, yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. But it's the energy in this area. Like, I feel like this is our starting point, but mm -hmm. I see us moving. Uh, I mean, yeah. this is just to get us here. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You just, just to start the, start the ball rolling, right? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> All right, we're gonna wait for everybody to get on here. I'm excited about this. We're just kind of tailing in this last couple couple of days of this lion's gate. I thought this was good timing because I know there's a lot of people that are seriously ready to live to live very intentionally right now. And so I'm I'm, I'm hoping that this is a much needed gift. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. All right. Let's see. We got. I'm glad you guys jumped on early because I was like testing this link out. We've got one minute before we get started. Thank you. I I got the message today that I manifested this. Oh, <laughs> so did I. <laughs> I manifested doing it. So <laughs> yeah, because I I did a two point um, like uh -huh. a week ago and continuing to you know, do the things, the steps from quantum fitness mm -hmm. and calling in that support and being reconnected, you know, with my, my soul sisters and everything. Yeah. Soul brothers. So here you are. Here we are. What, big happy family. Hey, Jules. Good. I'm just like, got in, I got on early just to make sure the test, uh, the link was working. Okay. I've been doing like so many different Zoom calls. I'm never sure like if the link is working, but it's all good. Okay, so we are right at 12 in like a couple of seconds, and I'm just gonna jump in. People can join whenever they want, or they can, um, where will, uh, Jules, let let everybody know where this archive will be. Um, do we have a place for them to watch later if they can't watch live? Yeah, it'll be, it'll be on the, the website, I mean, okay. We can, if you want, we can put it on YouTube and Facebook if you want. I, I don't have any problem with it. You know, I just know that some people reached out to me and said they weren't going to be able to attend live, but they wanted to watch it later. So where would it be? Yeah. Okay. Well, all, all your material is on the website. Yeah. Okay. So awesome. All right. Well, let's jump in. So this is kind of my gift. It's going to be in three parts. Um, we're going to do a one a week for the next three weeks. And, and again, you you guys will soon know if you don't already know that my work is always in three, six, nines. And that, and the reason for that is it's like a, a complete triangle, right? Of, of like full understanding of an idea. Sometimes that sometimes you feel like you have a missing piece to something. Like you get the, the idea of manifestation or you get this idea of like trauma, but like what's the missing piece. And so hopefully in these next three uh, webinars, I can kind of close that, help close that gap for you. So first and foremost, uh, the title, you know, just kind of threw out there, like, what is literally the trauma that is blocking your freedom? Freedom encompasses all of those, those wonderful things like money and time and, and like personal freedom and support, right? So if you really think about freedom, being truly free, you would have what you need, when you needed it, how you wanted it, you know, you wouldn't be kind of like parlaying, like, you know, your freedom. Well, I can do this or I can do that. So in, in the ultimate idea of being free, that's, it's an individual description. It's an individual definition. So everybody's is going to be different. So I just threw freedom in there as kind of that trigger word. And I think that everybody who is awake right now is, is kind of, kind of grasping on to what feels the most freeing right now because there's a lot of doors closing but there's also a lot of doors opening so let's kind of break this this down and when when i say the word trauma i'm not talking about getting hit by a car when you were 15 or that bankruptcy or you know um or you know your childhood abuse in particular i'm talking about just the definition of trauma 
And the definition of trauma that I like to use in, in the quantum method is anything that alters, anything that alters you from being truly you. Okay, so you can see that category just opened way up because I think a lot of us are like, no, I didn't have childhood trauma. Mm, you know, it's just like this idea of, well, I think that we're still children and we're still being traumatized. So we really need to kind of open up our definition of that and see, you know, what it is, every relationship, every job you've been in, every circumstance you've been in has either altered you in a positive way or it has altered you into a negative way. OK, like if every situation is for us to row through some things that we have gone through have made us kind of stunt our growth. All right. And that is going to be filtered through your identification, which means some breakups you felt you got smaller afterwards or you got more reclusive or you got, you know, more reserved or, you know, you just didn't want to go back out there. That's that's a contraction. So when we look at the idea of growth, we're talking about expanding, okay? If, if, you, if your life is growing, then all parts of you is expanding. Not, and, and some areas you'll notice are not expanding and some areas are, okay? But I really want you to just take, a, take stock really quickly over your life right now and look at that, that, that word opportunities right now. Do you feel you have an expansion of opportunities, okay? Or does your opportunity idea or the opportunities that seem to be flowing or not flowing, does it feel more contracted? Very like more separated, more of like, you're gonna have to make big choices if you want expansion, all right? So looking at that, that term expansion, if I use that over the next three classes and webinars, what I mean is growth, all right? Now, when we're talking about contraction, it kind of means to pull your energy in and kind of hide or get smaller or turn your volume down, all right? So we wanna get really specific today on what trauma is, how it is, why it is, where it is, when it is, so that you have awareness in what is actually blocking you right now. OK, because it's not about the past. It's not about the future. It's about alignment. So we know that time and space don't matter when it comes to really manifesting our lives. What really matters is alignment. Right. So when we where we look at the problem instead of the alignment, we get very caught up in that problem. We get very caught up in that situation. We get very caught up in that. Hey, Warren. <laughs> Hey, Jamie. <laughs> so we get very like inside of that situation instead of going, hold on. Something out there is not aligned with who I choose to be. Right. And so let me let me look at my alignment before I react. OK, look at that word. React. To act again. To act again. So let's look at the word respond. OK, like respond is kind of like you have that slight pause. You have that slight bit of consciousness there before you answer or show up to. So you're going to notice that all trauma is going to is going to show up as a reaction. You're going to it's a reenactment because trauma is basically past trauma in re-stimulation or it's it's buried energy that is surfacing and you're reacting to it, okay? So if we're really going to find what trauma is in your way, right? And trauma is very interesting because it's very much like a virus on your computer. And I know you've heard me talk about this, but I'm gonna go one through this one time just so you can get this, this platform. You can get out of your story and you can get into what trauma really is, okay? If it is a, a earlier, earlier traumatic experience that separated you from you, okay? This is not you separated from your mother. This is not you separated from you know, your home or your, your best friend or this, it's when you separated with you. Okay. There's a lot of you out there going through trauma therapy 
where you're going through trauma with your mother or with your father, okay? Ultimately, we are in the fifth dimension now and you're wasting your money. The trauma that you're looking for is the trauma of separation of self, all right? So I'm gonna give you a lot of powerful manifesting tools this, in this webinar. Ultimately, the universe does not care who and what rejected you, abandoned you, disassociated from you. It doesn't matter who you disassociated from. It doesn't matter who you lost. It only looks at where did you lose you? Because you are the center of the manifestation of yourself. The universe isn't looking for the two point of you and your mother, you and your father, you and your spouse, you and your money, you and your time. It's looking at you in time, you in money, you in health. So we've got to take the stories of everyone else's fault out of our ability to heal. All right. I get it. We all grew up in fertilizer or your last relationship was some serious fertilizer. I get it. We've all been in that. That's what forced us to grow. You know, that fertilizer was so good. It grew you, hopefully. All right. Now, when you're looking at trauma, the next three classes, you're only allowed to look at trauma through this definition of where did I separate, was forced to separate, got lost from, rejected myself, abandoned myself, avoided myself, hated myself, disgusted by myself, right? Where was that story, okay? Because when we start to unpack trauma, the story of what mom and dad did is never going to clean up your manifestations, ever. Because the universe doesn't even know they exist. The universe only sees you because you are the universe that it is flowing its 50% energy towards that's you're there to meet it 50%. Remember, your job is the what and the why. What am I and why am I? What do I want and why do I want it? That's it. The universe is the how and the when. Most of you signed up because you want to know how. How, 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 when, 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 right? And if the how and the when is not showing up, it's because your what and why is not showing up. We've got to find out why your what and why are not showing up. That's the trauma. When you have been separated from yourself, okay? it manifests as a physical separation of self. When you guys don't know what you're supposed to be eating, when your bodies can't lose weight, when your bodies can't get healthy, when you don't have the right ideas and you don't have the right solutions and you don't have the right metabolism and you don't heal fast, you have to look at this as separation of self. Now, notice the first inspiration that you have when something feels separate, like I don't know what I'm supposed to eat. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know how to fix this. We literally create another separation and go outside of ourselves asking for help, looking up the answer. We abandon that call again and we create another abandonment searching for an outside solution. Now, Here's where it becomes kind of a paradox. You could be going, where is my alignment? What am I doing? And then all of a sudden you hear YouTube playing over here and you're like, whoa, and you bring over here and there's your answer. You're not swallowing the fact that you don't know and literally escaping yourself and going to find someone who can fix you. That's very different. Inspiration means inspirited, which means your spirit is in the body and it's working with you and through you, all right? When you do not feel that your intuition is there or when you feel a mystery or you feel uncertain or scared or worried or you cannot find what you need in your physical life, all it means is that I am separate from me. Me, myself, and I, there's a disconnect, all right? That's why when we react, we go looking, searching, blaming, you know, accusing, asking, begging the outside world 
to please fix this separation within myself. And that will never happen because they will prove to you time and time and time again through the aspects of your projected reality that you're just going to get rejected and abandoned again, bottom line. And you can invest a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of energy, a lot of all of your resources into your outside world trying to fix this. I know you all have. This is why it's free, because I am telling you that this is inside of you. This is going to be free once you finally click this together. If people are not treating you well on the outside, it's you. It's a separation between you. If the money is not flowing in, at least in an ebb and flow way, it's a separation. If your body is not healing rapidly, it's a separation. Okay. If opportunities and support are not showing up, if you're not being seen or heard, if you do not feel safe right now in your reality, it is because you are separate from yourself. Okay. So you're probably thinking, well, how the heck do I do this? Okay. So there's a little bit of a backstory and I'm going to pull up my whiteboard. All right. And I'm going to show you exactly where and how this happens. If it will click here. Okay. Look at me. I'll grown up. All right. So I have created this three-part simulation to let you know how this works. Okay. So first we're going to kind of break down, well, who am I separating from? It's just me. No, it's not. If you've taken my alchemy masterclass, you realize there's a whole bunch of you in there, but really ultimately the whole bunch of you, the different personalities of you were basically at the center point of your beginning. There was three aspects of you. Okay. Technically two, but very quickly three. So there was a soul. Okay. There is the, the you that is on the mountaintop that can see all that is that, that can have a very clear view of, of the potential that is awaiting you. And then there's the body. The body is more navigating through that valley where it can only see what it can see. It only knows what it knows. It only has what it has. All right. So you could see how that would be a, a really cool exploration and adventure to have two parts of that. One who can just see what is and one of you who can see all the potential and more. All right. So that is your first two connections. And we look at that as the masculine energy and the feminine energy. The, the one that's real. I'm really on the ground. I'm, I'm real. I exist. I've got hands. And then you've got a part of you that is, is real, but more infinitely non-physically real. That's the feminine, the vision, the imagination, the potential, the possibilities. And then what is possible based from the masculine perspective is, well, what can I see here? What's real? What's black? What's white? What's right? What's wrong? And you have a starting point, which is a total paradox. And we call this duality. And you get to be in one itty bitty living space together. All right. Now it's just like getting a phone that you buy from Apple or wherever, Samsung, and you get it fresh and it's brand new, but it already has 15 apps sitting on it. It's already got built in apps, which means that there is a you, the universe, looking through all the perspectives of what could possibly be. There's a body that's going, who are we? Who are we going to be? And then there's some preconceived apps playing on your hard drive. Well, that's your family lineage. That's your bloodline. That's your genetics. That's your DNA. Okay. That's your karmic cosmic story of all that you've ever been. All right. Some of it is really exciting. And some of it is going to be a limitation for you. All right. Now, this was completely doable. This idea of duality, because the idea that you were going to come down here and merge into this masculine material, I manifest masculine reality, it was gonna be really exciting, okay? But then just like always, a third party ruins it, doesn't it? Two's a, part, two's a couple, three's a cloud. So this third perspective of you is not, is, is not given to you by anyone, it's made out of you. 
All right. Some people call it the ego. When I'm biohacking, I really like to use Eckhart Tolle's term, the pain body. All right. And I really like to use this because I think that the word ego has been overused and is not being considered in an organic fashion, the way we want to be perceived in this webinar, all right? It doesn't mean that it's not the ego, but so many of you out there are still trying to kill your ego and that's just impossible, all right? It's about looking at it as a entity that has become a true personality, a true being of itself out of the pain that you have resisted, endured, practiced, projected, reflected, the pain. And when I say the word pain, what I mean is that anything that hurts you, okay? And when I mean hurt, it means to chip away at, at it, you know, to slice off, to break, to bend, to squish, to suffocate. Pain can come in all different forms, all right? Pain usually is an indicator that there is a separation, right? Pain is an indicator that there is a separation, all right? Now, sometimes when things are separating, they're growing. Mm, remember when your bones were growing? Us shorties like Ann and I, we probably didn't notice it as much because we just stayed the sixth grade height, but some of you actually experienced your bones growing, all right? That wasn't a separation, but it was a separation because it was in long, it was, it was, a, a, it was an expansion, right? And if you've ever had a baby, you know that contractions and expansions hurt like a mother, literally, all right? So when we're looking at this idea of pain, it is very different from a masculine and a, a feminine perspective. So I just had a great talk with a married couple who is going to be opening a quantum fitness location. And the husband is an athletic coach, okay? And she's a web designer. And so they have a very different perspective of like pain. But see, women by nature or feminine energy by nature can sustain pain. <laughs> we can sit in it. We can, we, we embrace it. It's there all day long. Childbirth can take, you know, days sometimes. And, and men can take pain in moments. Like they could have their hand chopped off and they could survive that. Us, we could probably deal with the feeling of that hand being chopped off for a couple of weeks before we totally went insane. Doesn't mean that we're stronger. It just means our endurance of pain, okay? Because of what our bodies need to do, is the threshold of experiencing pain is we can sustain it longer, all right? Men, that's why when they get a cold, they're in a coma. Just kidding, but that's kind of true for some of those men out there, all right? So when we look at that idea, what we're kind of doing is not talking about you and your partnership out there. We're talking about you and your brain in here, which is you have a, fit, you have a masculine and a feminine part of your brain, all right? And so when you endure pain, it is not the physical trauma that creates the separation of yourself, okay? Trauma is just pain. The trauma part of it that actually tweaks your ability to be in alignment of your manifestation skills, tweaks your intuition away from you, tweaks what's right and wrong, tweaks what you heart desires away from you is who you have to become because of trauma. Who did you have to become because of trauma? Go back to a traumatic event when you were a child, okay? What were you allowed to do with it, right? What were you allowed to do with the trauma that you experienced? Were you allowed to throw your body on the floor and scream and yell and tell the universe it's not fair that you just experienced that pain? Probably not. You probably swallowed it. You hid from it. You avoided it. Or you did ask for support and help and it wasn't there. You might have been belittled or betrayed by it. And whatever happened that created trauma that's still affecting your now had to be avoided. Which means that if you were a child and your very purity or your very safety was not available to you, right? 
who did you have to become? You didn't get to be a kid. You're a little adult, maybe. Maybe you just disassociated from it altogether. Maybe you got real angry. It doesn't really matter what storyline fit for you. What matters is who did you have to become? And this is how pain gets a personality. All right. Your pain in your body has a personality. It has thoughts. It has feelings. It has emotions. It has desires. It has cravings. Okay. And it believes it's real. It believes it's real. Now there's three of you. Okay. There's the body, right? There's the materialization of your spirit trying to figure out who you are. There's the spirit trying to remind you who you are. And now there's this third party. Okay. This pain body that is thinking and it's feeling and it's reacting and it's desiring and it's craving. I know right now, if I ask you this, you'll find one like that. Think of a desire that you've had in the last year that bit you in the ass, okay? That was actually a detriment. Think about a desire that you had, that you really wanted to experience, that you manifested, that ended up contracting your reality. It contracted you. And you're thinking, can I even trust my desires? I, my picker is broken. I don't know how to pick things for myself. I, I think something's going to work and then it doesn't. Okay, that was your pain body choosing. Your pain body was attracted to that. Okay, we're going to talk a lot about hormones in this class because a lot of you guys are trying to get me to fix your hormones, but you have to understand that hormones are the soundtrack of who's playing inside of you. Who's running the train? Is it the pain body driving? Because if your pain body is driving, you're manifesting more contraction. It's going to be exciting. You're going to be so hopeful. You're going to be like, Eureka, I was just praying for this. And it, it's going to feel like love bombing. It's going to feel like an instant connection. It's going to feel like the next greatest thing. It's going to feel like the answer. Guaranteed, not one of you was that excited to do this webinar. And the reason why is because this isn't about the dopamine that you can get from another, another teacher. This is about creating serotonin serotonin is I feel safe that's what I want for you I want you to feel safe on your journey because if you feel safe on your journey you're going to figure this out if you do not feel safe on your journey you're going to keep looking for the instant gratification of the things that are going to make you feel safe for a moment and you're going to go through this freaking hamster wheel for another year I don't care if you feel like warm and fuzzy, like you just had a big Starbucks coffee. I would rather you feel peace when you're done with this process. And that's what serotonin is. It's a peaceful, safe space for you to build on. All right. So as you look at my fun little whiteboard that I created, I want you to look at how the me, myself, and I breaks down in the physical body, because this is a body game, you guys. All this trauma, all these hormones, all these desires, all of these you know, so-called intuitions or right or wrongs or judgments or traumas are only alive in your physical body. That's why you're like, I know this isn't real. I know that I don't really want that. Or I know that, that this isn't really how my life is supposed to be. I know, which is your crown chakra. But dude, I feel, dude, I want, what man I need, okay? So when we look at the idea of the head, all right, the head of the house, very masculine energy, all right? Because pain is heavy, okay? It has a density to it, it has a weight. It's gonna weigh something. It's considered more masculine than it is feminine, all right? Now, when we look at this idea of thinking, right? When you're using your head, use your head. Your parents probably told you that. And you were like, what? I was trying to use my heart. And they're like, no, use your head, idiot, okay? So when you use your head, a lot of the times, if you do not trust yourself, if you do not know who you are, if you do not know what you're doing in your world, if you don't know if you're with the right person, if you don't know if you're in the right job, your trauma always has an answer, always has a solution, always has something to say. It's very loud. And you're going to perceive it as a solution to a problem. All right. And so when the head, the thinking mind is very active 
in worry, in stress, in lack, in rejection, in abandonment, you're going down a negative spiral fast and it's going to feel really good. So bad it feels good. All right. You're going to get a lot of, you're going to get a lot of yummy hormones from that depression, from that anxiety. Okay. And it's going to make your whole system feel alive. We talk a lot about this in quantum fitness part one in this idea of this pain reward program that your trauma is constantly set on. So this identification of your trauma that has a personality, right? Its entire reality is based on keeping that personality, all right? Have you met someone and you're like, um, you can really do some personal work and they're like, I am who I am. This is just who I am. All right. Very masculine. So think about your pain body saying exactly that to you. I am who I am. You know, and and I'm saying, well, you might want to like, you know, I don't know, fix your relationship with your heart or, you know, talk to the gut once in a while, because um, there, there's an intervention needed here. And the mind's like, nope, I got it all figured out. I'm supposed to eat paleo. That's what works for me. Okay, you see, and it may not even work for you, but once you've decided it's what works for you, then you have to control it. You have to micromanage it. You have to show up as it. It has to be all or nothing or somehow you're wrong. All right. And so this thinking mind of yours has to become the boss of you when the heart, which is the connection to all that is, gets disemboweled or are not allowed to connect when you are not allowed to connect to your dad or not allowed to be nurtured by your mother or not allowed to go where you want to go or not allowed to have what you want to have when you're not allowed okay that forms trauma it alters your personality right and because the child in you is I'm not allowed to have it so I'm going to figure out a way to kind of have something that feels kind of sort of a little bit like it Always, you're always going to be searching for something that kind of feels a little bit like what I really want, but I'll settle for instantly. Okay. You'd rather have the narcissistic partner than no partner. You'd rather have no partner than a partner that's going to push you to grow. You see, so it's an all or nothing situation. The more your heart gets unallowed to connect by trauma, the more walls you have to build to protect yourself because connection to yourself is also broken. See, you had a connection to nature, you had a connection to your higher power, you had a connection to your body when you were first born, hopefully. And those were all like, don't do that, don't feel that, don't say that, don't express that, don't even think that, okay? So now the, the head and the heart, there's no coherence, all right? So when that flows down into the gut, think about it. Difficult things to digest, difficult things to swallow, difficult things to process, mysteries, lack of closure, unanswered questions, inability to, to feel safe and letting go, needing to hold on or needing to run away. This is where all of our gut issues and trauma manifest, all right? So we got three different types of major trauma that we endure by just not being allowed to be yourself. Now, you've been forced to separate from yourself early on, okay? You've been forced to consider yourself someone who will never fit into fertilizer, although you really wish they would just love you. You will never fit in anywhere you go. You're ultimately alone, even in relationships. You're probably the smartest person in every room that you go into, but you feel not good enough, somehow unworthy. This is the trauma identification of the pain body. Your pain has a personality and it is thinking, it is craving, it is doing, it is behaving. It has habits and addictions that have nothing to do with who you really are, all right? So that's how this separation happens. Now, ultimately, energy creates matter. So if I have a block between my head and my heart and my gut, and those physical blocks manifest in the physical, I'm gonna have issues in those parts of the body because look at our, our flow, 
And if I kink a hose when I'm trying to wash my car, no water's gonna come out. So if my gut is not getting the life force energy that I am trying to flow through it like a river, it's gonna start behaving it in a way that feels very suffocating, locked, contract, parked, alone, stuck. Have you been saying these things? Because it might just be your gut that's speaking. Is your heart feeling alone, unsupported, unseen, unheard, a lack of connection? Maybe your heart is just separated. Your head, do you have the answers? Do you know where you're going? Do you know what your purpose is? Do you know what your power is? Do you know how to make money? Do you know how to have a healthy relationship? Maybe it's the disconnection, okay? So when we look at this idea of the pain body, I really need you to understand is that you're not broken. You're not broken, okay? It feels broken. It feels lost. You feel alone. You feel stuck. None of it's true. All you are is life force energy in a human container. This human container was actually designed to learn with source energy and grow into source energy embodied. That's what you're here for. All right. So if the source energy inside of you is backing up and backing up and backing up and backing up, you probably have endless ideas, endless visions, endless imaginations, endless inventions, endless solutions to everyone else's problems. You have ideas and no money, no support, no opportunity, and no way to get to where you're going. Okay. That's going to be your manifestation of trauma. So let's look at it. So if you look at my little pain body diagram that I have here, all right, we're going to jump to the over at the, the my right side here that I'm looking at the past, present, and future. So you have trauma in your past. Okay. Trauma in your past feels haunting. It feels like you're avoiding. It feels like you're trying to outrun or or fix or integrate or clean up or you know, it, it, that's the kind of sensation that trauma in the past is going to give you. Now, trauma in the present moment that is now leaking into your present moment, it's affecting your money and your time and your relationships and your health, that's going to feel like anxiety, okay? That's going to feel like depression. That's going to feel like a lack of motivation, procrastination, and you're going to feel like you're waiting. That's how trauma manifests in your present moment. How does trauma manifest in your future? Anticipation, worry, okay? Worry, stress, adrenaline spikes, uh, social anxiety, um, time anxiety, um, relationship anxiety, okay? Because you're anticipating based on the past what could happen, all right? And you're sitting here feeling completely stuck with a head full of amazing ideas and a heart full of desires and a gut full of intuition that you can't connect to. And you're calling this person and going, hey, can you help me open my clairvoyance or gift me my clairvoyance. And what I want to tell you is that it's, it's you're hiding in your candy center. It's inside of you. All right. And what happens if those of you who guys did the vision quest with me, we had this base point of starting this quest and then all of your pain became walls around you. Right. So if you look at this center point of where I am, you can see that there's light that surrounds me. I am the light body. Right. And then my knowledge is there. Okay, and then my expression of truth is there. And then my a way that I love and connect is there. And then the way that I demonstrate is there. And then my creative way that I can manifest my reality is there. And then my root is there with all of the things that are in my life that I get to root together to bring everything into one. And then pain happens. And the pain begins to build outside of that. Now, this pain is rejection, it's abandonment, it's humiliation, it's, it's a stress of uh, what, what am I supposed to do, who am I supposed to be? It's a question, it's a mystery, it's guilt, it's shame, all right? It's resentment. So think about your walls. Now, if you're alone, okay, if you're alone right now, if you're not in an intimate relationship, you are probably feeling like, yeah, I'm pretty good. Like all is well, right? Okay, well, go put yourself into some relationships and we'll see what happens. Your pain body is going to start talking real quick. 
Because let's look at the word family. Familiar, family, right? It's familiar trauma. <laughs> so this is why your family is such an amazing trigger. React, okay? Because not only is it happening to you, it's happening inside of you because you are the blood of that, all right? This is why family is the most difficult to heal because of the intimacy into me I see, all right? So the least amount of relationships that you're in, the less you're gonna feel triggered, all right? Now, you might have no one around you, but money is your trigger. No one around you, but your own body is your trigger, all right? No one around you, but time is like not on your side here. You will find a way to manifest this pain body as if it was a personality outside of you. All you have to do is exist, okay? And we're becoming more and more and more aware. And this is why it's becoming more and more frustrating. Because the more aware you get and the less solutions you have, see, awareness is only the first step. It's not like, oh yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it. No, that's the first step. Now you have to interact with this. Uh, Jess, we are still on the whiteboard. You might need to reshare your screen again if you... Uh, hold on a second. I hear you. Um, can you guys see me? Yes? Or just the whiteboard? Okay, you're fine. I'm going to leave it here because I want you guys to be able to look at this. All right. Can you still see the whiteboard? Just thumbs up. Okay. This is how I want it. All right. So when we're looking at this idea of this pain body diagram, look at the chains around and look at what they're made out of. All right, they're made out of abandonment, rejection, lacking, guilt, shame, the word no, right? Not seen, not heard, not safe. Now, the very things that are surrounding the real you are vibrating, okay? So you're gonna have this instinct that you need to stay safe. You're gonna have this instinct that you have to protect yourself. You're gonna have this instinct that you have to defend yourself. You're gonna have this instinct that you have to like project about guilt and shame. Now, because you have an instinct to protect yourself from this very wall you've created around yourself from it, from literally just existing, then there's another juicy little element in this chess game called law of resistance. Law of resistance actually magnetizes you to safety issues. So if you have a I'm not safe wall around you, you're going to be a magnet for things that are not safe. It's gonna be you who has the accident. It's gonna be you that is homeless. It's gonna be you that loses all their money in a scam. It's gonna be you that is betrayed or hurt or raped. I know I'm being extra juicy there, but I need you to hear that when you have that pain wall around you, it vibrates the same as your soul because it's real and it's there, all right? So if you have guilt, you're probably guilting someone. If you feel ashamed, you're shaming someone because it's always playing duality to try to balance itself. Well, if I feel guilty, I want you to feel it. Let me ask you a question. Why does it feel so good when you see people that are very high fail? Why? because you feel like a failure and you want your story to be right, that it's hard. When someone falls out of fame, when someone falls out of grace, when someone falls bankrupt that you don't like because envious or jealousy or comparison, like you should be where they are and they fall, there's a part of you that is excited about that. Why? Is that you or is that your pain? Because the part of you that is watching them in the first place is trying to get the memo that that's what you are closer to, you see? So when you look at your comparison, your envy, your judgments, your security issues, your guilt, your shames, your blames, this is the personality of your pain body and it ain't you. In this, in this hour, 
I'm really trying to bring this home, a good dose of serotonin to you, that that ain't you. Because a lot of you are like, I'm a fraud, or I can't practice what I preach, or but the honest to God truth of it is, is that you are the person who has the answers. You do know, you do have the inspiration, you do have the knowledge, you do have the resources, but it's locked inside of a cage and the pain around you is acting like a block, a stuck. It feels like you're waiting. It feels like you're, you're suffocating. It feels like you're shackled. It feels like you're alone. It feels like you're not good enough. All right. So how do our emotions tie in to this, all right? So emotions are a soundtrack. If you've ever watched a movie, next time you watch something or a TV show, pay attention to the music. About 10 or five seconds before a new scene or character steps on the screen, that character will have its own soundtrack to get you ready to have and see a new character. So you're me, you're myself, and your eye all have different soundtracks, okay? So your me is like the villain, dun, 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 right? And your inner child is like the whimsy, miracle, like magical, like fun music. And the higher self is like that we are champions music, okay? And you have all three soundtracks playing. And if you pay attention about five to six, 10 seconds before, you enter a room, if you paid attention to how you felt, you would know which one was driving. You'd be like, oh, the villain's here. We're about to walk in this room and see and hear and taste and touch through this pain body. Okay? Don't you ever have a day where you're just, everything irritates you? Everyone irritates you? You ain't you. That's the villain. Or or the part of you that was built out of rejection and abandonment, because that's also part of you. Now, it isn't the real you. The real you is that tiny little candy center that's got the bright light. It's like, look how magical and intuitive and psychic and rich and beautiful I am, okay? And then everything around you that you were trying to share and shine that was uniquely to your experience has been shackled, trapped, and now it feels like you're waiting for your turn. You even hear teachers say, be patient, BS, okay? When they tell you to be patient, that means that you're not allowed to run fast. You're a spirit. You travel faster than light when you're not in a body, all right? You are energy. It's the fastest moving anything in the whole universe in a little bitty living space. And you think, well, it's because my genetics or it's because I'm older or because I'm a woman or because I'm not smart enough or because of whatever. And that's all part of your pain personality. When you think you're a fraud, when you think you're unworthy, when you think you're helpless, when you think you're hopeless, when you think you're not strong enough, when you think you're not, you don't know enough, that's not you, that's your pain body, all right? And it will use your emotions, energy in motion, to connect to a feeling that the feeling will give you the instant character. The feeling puts you into character, okay? The feeling. I feel positive. I feel whatever, okay? So most of the time on your journey, you have figured out a way to bypass this, all right? You've heard that term spiritual bypassing. You've heard delete, delete, delete. You hear a thought come in. Delete that. Go to a happy place. Well, guess what? Your pain body has learned how to have a positive spin on pain. The pain body now becomes a healer. The pain body becomes a priest. The pain body becomes a rescuer. The pain body becomes a survivor. The pain body becomes the one who writes the best-selling book about all of the pain and yet still sits and suffers at home. So your pain has a personality to keep having the personality. So it's not trying to destroy you. It's just trying to have that personality. It wants to be who it is. It wants to exist. It says, I am real. This pain is real and I really got hurt and my mother really didn't love me and I want that to be true. Okay, right? We well, ain't never gonna get your full intuition if that's true because if you're in pain, which is counterintuitive, pain means separation. So who are you separated from? Pain can be intuitive. We call this dark light. 
Hello? Pain can be psychic. Pain can be all kinds of magic. Because pain doesn't mean that it's the vibration of a rock. It means it's the absence of love. That's what it means. It's the absence of connection. It's the separation. If you've been around anybody and all of a sudden you discovered their false light, how did you figure it out? You started separating from people that you really love. You stopped separating more from yourself. You started idolization of them. You started following what they were doing. You started following what they were eating. Okay. And then all of a sudden you feel like you're somehow like, like you can't live without this person. All right. So again, now let's even up the ante in this chess game. Every single person that you know has a pain body. Every single person that you interact with has one of these. <laughs> Fun, right? Not only do you have your ours to deal with, that you have others. And who do you think you're going to be attracted to? What's the first line of defense when you meet someone new? Yes, wound mates. Okay. When you meet someone new, if you feel an instant connection, what's the first part of you in this diagram? Is it your soul or is it abandonment? What's the first thing you see when I show you this diagram of you with a pain body? Rejection, abandonment, lacking, shame, guilt. The word no, I'm not seen, I'm not heard, grief, fear, confusion. So give this relationship three months and you will be feeling everything on your first layer of your pain ball. Three months, tops. That's how long it takes for the shadow to start infiltrating. And here's why. When you meet pain at pain, <gasps> misery loves company. You think you're in love, but it's just two pain bodies coming together. And it's like a magnet. Zoom. You can't be away from each other. Oh my God, I love you. You're my soulmate. I've known you in a past life, right? Well, guess what? It takes three months for that intimate relationship to get to your can canny center. Your little, your bright light inside of that. And by the time it gets to you, you go, I don't like you. You're not nice to me. Like, wait, you're, you're rejecting me and telling me you love me. You're saying abandonment is how I'm going to be a good person, right? So it's interesting that you say, well, why does it take three months to figure out something about someone? It is because the three months it takes, the bigger your pain body, the bigger your pain body, maybe it takes you nine months. Mm hmm Okay, you have to remember that you've been building this pain body every seven year cycle. And every seven year cycle, this wall goes from, it's kind of like your liver. A healthy liver is a sponge, right? When a child first has trauma, they don't really buy into it. They're like, mm, right? Until they have to alter their personality around trauma, a child does not harden, all right? They do not lose their imagination. They are not like, clingy okay they are they don't have separation anxiety but when that wall starts to harden and that soul can't get out they're going to need help they're going to need mommy they're going to need toys they're going to need to lots of physical care so that's how you know if your pain body has really hardened is if you need help okay if you need support not just want but if there's a codependency, if someone is paying your bills and you cannot support yourself on your own, your pain body is thicker than you think it is. And I'm not calling anyone out here because I've been there. All right. When your pain body becomes solid, like your liver cannot, it's like a rock. When your pain body starts to become concrete and the soul can't get through and that, and the parts of you that are calling from the soul are trying to get to you, you're not going to manifest those people in solutions. You're going to manifest the first line of your pain body because when you're concrete pain body, you're setting yourself up for more problems, more loss, more rejection, and it's all going to feel like hope. It's all, and this is the loop guys, hope, right? You're first, you're inspired and then you get hopeful. Okay. That hope turns into excitement, excitement turns into expectations, expectations turn into disappointment and disappointment turns into depression within usually three to nine months, all right? Look at something big you've done, buy a house, get in with a, a new guy, take a new job, invest in something, try a new diet. How long did it last? 
Well, who chose that connection? Who chose that partnership? Who chose that house? Was it the you, the candy center? Or was it the abandonment and rejection wall? Because if the abandonment and rejection wall chose, guaranteed you're about to get rejected. This is a pretty scary place. But the beauty of it is, is that if all you take out of today is, I really want to react to this excitement opportunity here, but I'm going to respond. Because respond means that it gets through the concrete and it gets into the layers of the real you. When you take that pause, when you take a minute and you go, wait, I'm way too excited. This feels like way too instant connection -y here. This feels like kismet. This feels like the thing I've been waiting for for my whole life. And it just happened. And you've done no pain body work. I would say, um, I'm going to take a pause on that. Unless you really want to get on that hamster wheel for another nine months and have your hormones distract you. Because your hormones, once they get triggered, you're in the character. Either the villain shows up, the inner child shows up, or the higher self shows up. Okay? And I want to ask you, who's showing up at home with your bills, your laundry, and your trauma? Because it ain't the person that's showing up in meditation. It's not the person that's walking in nature. It's not the creative artist that you're taught, you know, you're tinkering in your garage with. All right. The part of you that lives in your intimate surroundings is your pain body. You're always protective and defensive over yourself, no matter what. Your partner's sick. What does that mean for you? Okay. Your partner's in a bad mood. What eggshells are you walking on today? Right. Your pain body has to get thicker now. You could be doing a ton of energy work. You could be spending $1,000 a month on energy workers and build a bigger pain body. Because what's happening is when you go in and have an energy session, you guys, you're defragging your computer and it's, it, it, it is working. Energy medicine works. You're bringing all of your shields down. You're bringing those walls down. Do you realize that you're creating more abuse for yourself? Because what you're doing is now you're vulnerable and brand new and you see the world through these beautiful eyes of yours inside there and you go back into your house thinking that everybody's going to see you that way. But your defenses are down. And because you haven't created the force field out of those seven chakras, those seven chakras make a force field. All right. But if they are not doing their job, okay, if your root chakra is not building a community for you, if your root chakra is not managing your sustainability and your money for you, if your creativity is not creating big projects for you, if you are not demonstrating the way you want, then your chakras are going counterclockwise and look at that word counterintuitive. Your own, your, your own life force energy is now going to work against you. All right. So when you look at your emotions and your feelings, I need you. Well, I don't care really, but if you would look at this this way, what if you felt depression and you went, what if this isn't real? What if you felt anxiety and you took a breath and went, maybe this isn't real. Maybe you felt insomnia and you went, maybe I just need a glass of water, right? Instead of buying in. So what creates a thicker pain body is that you buy into your feelings. This is real. This is real. He treated me badly. Okay. All men are pigs, right? I can't trust anyone. My family hates me and I hate them. The world is dying. I have no money. I have no way to support myself. You have hormones that are going to gladly support you. The hormones that are going to make you feel alive. Okay, anger, rage, anxiety, fear, worry, guilt, shame. That's what's going to make you feel alive. All right. When you feel alive, it means that you can show up. When you start feeling like, what's the point? And you lack motivation and you just don't care anymore. And you're just like, whatever. Right. That only means that you are so being counterintuitive to what your true potential is, is that you are giving up, but not surrendering. Giving up is like, what's the point? When I do go after what I want, it bites me in the ass. Okay, when I do speak my truth, I get attacked. When I do shine my light, I get judged. What's the point? 
So you build a whole new pain body around that of what's the point? You also have one called it's not fair, right? And so as we're looking at this, now I really want you to see, I wanna ask you two questions. And these are the questions that I'm gonna ask you every week, all right? Right now, what do you have abundance of that you don't want? I asked this in the Lionsgate um, conversation. This is important because we live in a very abundant, lack-based world, which means you probably have a lot more than some other people in the world. And you probably, your pain body uses that against you. Well, you really should be happy with what you have. You should really be happy that you have somebody. You really should be happy that he hears you at all. You really should be happy that he's paying your bills right now. You really should be okay that you have all of this when people don't have this. Okay, that's your pain body talking. All right? Because a lot of us have an abundance of lack. And what is abundance of lack? It's being house poor. What's an abundance of lack? Too much car payment and not enough freedom for vacations and play. What is abundance of lack? Too much job, too little money. You hear what I'm saying here? Abundance of lack. I want you to take a note of where you are abundantly in lack. Where do you have an abundance of responsibilities and you're lacking playtime? Do you have abundant of people to take care of, which means you can't take care of yourself? So where are you abundantly lacking? It's figure out day, all right? And where has this been going on for a while, all right? A while tells you how old this pain body is, all right? Your second question, and this is coming direct from your soul, what is it that you've wanted for a very, very, very long time that you still haven't manifested, all right? Do you want that 100 clients? Do you want that 20 grand a month coming in and out? Do you want the freedom to travel? Do you want your body to finally heal? Like, what is it that you have been wanting, right? That you still don't have consistently. The key word is consistently because the worst part about the pain body is it manifests your solution and then it takes it away. You don't get to keep it very long. You manifest exactly what you want, but it's either a devil in disguise or it's bittersweet and you lose it. You get the home, but it's not the home. You get the job and it's a job from hell. You get the money, but it's just only enough, right? So the pain body will take that manifestation that the soul worked so hard to connect to and basically turn it into rejection and abandonment because that's what pain does. It ruins everything. Every relationship that has ever been ruined has come from the pain body. Every job that's ever been ruined came from the pain body. The pain body is basically a consumer of all joy until there's no joy. So if the soul says, you know what, I've really wanted my own home for a really long time. I really wanted to be on my own where I was thriving for a really long time. That's what I've wanted that I've wanted for a very long time. But your pain body is rejected and abandoned from you. So it doesn't, can't, it doesn't trust you. And so it spends its money on instant gratification to feel free instead of putting it into the bank to move out. I know you've all done this and maybe your situation's different. I really deserve these new jeans. YOLO, I self-care. Let me spend $2,000 at the spa. That's why this question is so important because this question right here is your soul trying to talk to you. This is who we are. This is where we are. We're in jail. Can you please let us out? Stop spending this money over here in instant gratification and start putting it into this right here question. What have we wanted for a really long time that we can't manifest, okay? And whether it's time, money, health, all you have to do is look at your sabotaging dopamine, okay? Your instant gratification to your own addictions, the addictions that keep you bitter, sweetly, poor, and alone and stuck, okay? Is everybody following me here? Thumbs up, okay? All right, now let's take a breath. This is a lot of information, 
All right, good, thank you. This is a lot of information, but I know that this question is, is why can't I manifest what I want when I've done all of this work, okay? Well, if you've done all of this work, then all you've done is you've made your pain body stronger, you've turned it into a philosopher, you've turned it into a life coach, you've turned it into a healer. But if you still have, don't have manifested what you want, which is usually freedom, think about it. When I asked you that, what do you have that you don't want takes away from your freedom? What do you want that you don't have sets you free? Look at these two questions. This is your duality here. Your answer of how to free yourself is in the middle here, and it's the pain body. All right? Now, let's look at time, relationships, health, and money. All right? Where do you feel truly free? All right? Let's go percentage-wise. And this is just for your own notes for today. I don't need to see this. In time. And when I mean time to be you, I don't mean time to get your dishes done and your job done. I mean. How much of your day, how much time do you get to spend being you? Being you. This will also show you how thick your pain body is. Because some of you have time, but because rejection and abandonment is your main pain wall, you will reject and abandon your own free time. You'll feel guilty if you have free time. You'll feel ashamed if you have free time. You'll feel like humiliated that you should be working harder. You'll feel like I'm lacking, so I shouldn't play. You'll feel like, no, this isn't, this is just going to create something. You followed me, right? Let's look at relationships. Guaranteed you're reacting and blaming for your pain wall. Guaranteed. Because the beauty thing about when you attract someone from a pain body, you attract someone to trigger your pain. Wound mate, cell mate right? And because it's, it's such a kinetic force, like when you put two magnets, right, together, and they go like that, okay? But what if you turn the other one on this side? It's like there's a buffer there. Do you know that's a soulmate? Because you get to stay in your own universe. Do you know that's a soulmate? It's not going to feel like love bombing and instant connection. It's not. This is a, this is a twin flame. You're, you're about to go down in flames, Literally, and some of you marry these people. God bless you because you want to be able to see this pain every day because it's the only way you're going to heal from it because you're stubborn. And that's fine too. Because you can still get out of it with another pain body irritating your pain body. Now, both of you are having allergic reaction to each other because your abandonment triggers, you know, their rejection and their rejection triggers your abandonment. And it's wonderful. The pain body loves intimate relationships. Here's why because you don't notice you. You don't notice that you're the problem. You know that they're the problem. But even the desire to get free from them, higher self is hoping that you'll come back to yourself. Okay? Because higher self's love language is, I will return you to yourself at all costs. I will return you to the you that you rejected and abandoned at all costs. That's how higher self shows up in love. All right? Inner child, it wants to touch and share its light. So it will take what it can get. It will give up Christmas for a good meal. The inner child will settle because, you know, the pain body is literally sabotaging everything it touches. The soul keeps putting everything it wants right in eyes view, but it can't have it. Do you know how horrible that is for a child? The soul is manifesting for you. It's putting everything you want right here. And maybe it's not in your home. It's on social media and someone else has it, but it's right here. You can see it. You can see it happening. The pain body says it's right there, but you can't have it. We can't ever have anything we want. What's the point? And the inner child's like, well, I can have cookies and I can climb up this refrigerator and I can eat a cookie. And while I'm waiting for these two idiots to figure it out, I can go, you know, make a mess over here. I can go explore. I can sit on social media for five hours and look at what other people are doing. I will have fun at any cost. All right. So when we're looking at this idea of the me, myself, and I, we're looking at the idea of the I am, the soul, the myself, which is the inner child and the connection, and the me, my ego, or my pain body, right? 
and you have this family of three, you have this, this is what you're dealing with here. And this is all that needs to be healed or cleared or integrated. All right. Because none of you are broken and you're all clairvoyant, you're all clairsentient, you're all clear audio, you're all, you know, telepathic, you're all powerful, you all have super genetics, you all have superhuman qualities, you all have angelic abilities, but you're inside this hard candy shell. And the bigger and the thicker your pain body is that you use to protect yourself, the bigger it is, the less, the less you feel free, the less you feel intelligent. OK, but because the pain body also is acting as protection, here's the kicker. You also feel smarter than everyone. You feel better than everyone. Half the time you're like, look at these idiots sleeping. And the other half of the time you're going, I'm an idiot. That's a wonderful place to live, isn't it? So just think about your last week. Then you hear all this 5D and 6D and superhuman genetics and all this stuff. And you're going, oh. Wait, I'm going to tell you guys something. The reason why I'm really doing this free webinar is because when I opened my quantum fitness studio and I said, guys, we've got to get this pain body out. We've got to heal this pain body. And it's physical. We can't do this through meditation and words don't teach. I can't keep teaching this. We've got to do this. We've got to, we've got to take action in the physical body because this pain body exists in your neural pathways, your cellular memory, your muscle memory, your guts right? All of your organs, your blood, your lymph, your bone, your marrow, your subatomic energy. The longer you've had a seven-year cycle, the more subatomic this pain wall becomes, okay? Which means your foundation of your blueprint, your trauma is out there. Let's say you're in your 60s. You've got a really long relationship with this pain wall. It's like Fort Knox, all right? It's updated. It's, it's now on the grid of 5D. It's an automatic. If you start to get intelligent, it gets intelligent. You start to want something, it shows up, right? It's like seeing, I want this rug and then seeing it on Facebook. Your pain body is adapting. It's getting smarter, all right? It's becoming more of a jail cell, not less, all right? Every seven-year cycles, it imprints like a zip drive, zoop. And then it builds new neural pathways, new cellular memory, and that's why you get older. You don't get older because you're getting older. You get older because of trauma. The human body is only designed to live to, to grow to 21 years and then creator was supposed to step in and be like, I got this. But our pain body started accelerating stress and amplifying our ability to be present. And so then we started rushing into the future and resisting the past. And that is what creates major acceleration of age. So let me ask you a question. How old does your soul feel? Billions of years old, thousands of years old, hundreds of years old, just sit with it. You're probably old as hell, your soul. All right. And when I say old, I mean forever, infinitely there. All right. Now, how old does your inner child feel? If you were able to be free right now, how would you express yourself if literally those gates just opened wide up and someone handed you a billion dollars? How old would you feel? Okay. And now let me ask you this. How old does your pain body feel? How old does your pain body feel? And AKA, what are you allowed to do? Okay. And this is important awareness. And hopefully you're taking notes or you go back later and take notes. And you ask yourself these questions out loud because it's the conversations that you have with yourself that is going to move this energy. The conversations that you have with yourself, not your sister, not your healer, not your guru. You asking yourself these questions, seeing if you can feel the difference between the me, myself, and I. All right. The, the pain body is and and but is the get rich quick pessimist. It is the righteous, arrogant insecurity. That's your pain body. Your inner child is manipulative, inquisitive, curious, adventurous, and very, very, very much an explorer. Your higher self is the experience of all. It's just happy to be there. It just is. It's just infinite 
it's wise, it's wisdom. There's no rush. There's just observing. There's I am, all right? You've got to be able to know the difference because if you keep making moves with your pain body, you guys, you're creating a thicker jail cell while, while you're gonna see other people get free and that's a bad feeling, okay? You're gonna see people start chipping away at this pain wall and you're going to be adding to it by your get rich quick new age philosophy. And, you know, I would consider myself kind of new age. And it just doesn't work if you don't heal the pain body. And how do you heal the pain body? Right? We're going to get there. We're going to get there by the third webinar. But you've got some serious soul searching to do because you have believed that a lot of these desires are you. That's why I wanted you to take stock over your last three years and look at the things that got you the most excited and ask yourself, ultimately, did they expand me or move me back into codependency? Did I have to go back into a job, back into needing help, back into support? Because you can't just keep going in energy sessions and healing from the inside because all that's happening is your pain body is now getting a different language to speak, okay? And it's, it's scary out there when these pain bodies can speak our language, you guys. It's scary because you don't know who you can trust. You think you've found your tribe. Three months later, they're stabbing you in the back, right? And you're like, wait, they just stole my workshop. I can't tell you how many people have written into me and said, hey, Jess, your, um, your meditations are in so-and-so's workshop. Or your work is sitting in this person. And I'm like, so good. I'm like, but they didn't even give you credit for it. Okay, I don't care. That would have hurt my feelings three years ago because it would have been mine, 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 mine. Now I don't give a shit. I would like more playmates on that playground. So if it works, use it. Okay, because I've been working on my pain body. Nothing's mine. It's ours. All right, but just think about that. Even the people that have really been high accord to you, the bigger your pain body is, the more they've done you dirty. Maybe it's me. But the thing is, is it's your pain body perceiving it. Not me. Because I, I thought we were friends. You see? So when you look at your pain body, it's always going to be taking score. Not stock. Notice how I say take stock. Look at what we have to work with. When you take score, mine, yours, mine, yours, I can't have, I'm not allowed, you're not allowed, that's not fair, what's the point? You have to start seeing where your pain body is thinking in your behalf, all right? And if you can do that this week and really sit in it and be like, that's my pain body, ooh, that's my partner's pain body. Because I know you know what your partner's pain body is. You could probably like chisel that out of some clay you know your partner's pain body. You know when they get defensive, protective, right? Irritated, resentful. They guilt you. They shame you. They reject you. They abandon you. Guess what? That's their pain body. How they really feel is they love you. How they really feel is they, they don't want to act like that. They want to love you. But there's this thick wall that says love is pain. Okay? And the more intelligent the pain body gets, the more dangerous you become, bottom line. So when children do not heal trauma and that trauma becomes a personality, it starts to manifest. So now there's three different manifestors sitting in that body and you're going, yes, no, yes, no. And now this is counteracting all of it and I'm starting over again. How many times have you started over in the last five years? If the answer is more than three, right, it's time to chip this bad boy away, okay? And you cannot do this through meditation because meditation has now become part of your pain body. Anything you've tried to chip it away or break it down or heal it instantly or just work out or just diet or just do this, there is a very strategic way that I'm going to show you guys whether you come to quantum fitness or not. All right, 
Now, it's going to be much, much more entailed for you to do this on your own. And you're going to have to be dedicated to this because consistency and routine is the only way out of this. Your, your consistency and your routine is going to be completely imploding by your addictions. Your addictions are going to break your consistency. Your addictions are going to break your routine. Who do you wake up as? Who do you go to sleep as? Do you even have any idea? Okay, I'm going to give you guys a daily routine. I'm going to help you start chipping away at this. Because you know what? It would be really, really awesome if there was more, more souls walking around this planet than just pain bodies that are like volcanoes ready to explode. If you have road rage, check your pain body. Okay. If you get irritated when things don't go your way, if you're a control freak, if you're, if you are a perfectionist, if you're still wondering why you're judging after all the work you've done, if you're still wondering where the money is, check your pain body. Look at it. Take a picture of it. All right. Look at it. Who's on the front line of your personality? Because like attracts like. I need you to hear that three times. Like attracts like. Like attracts like. I said it for all three of you. So you are attracted to your pain body. You are attracted to your inner child. You are attracted to your soul. But if you attract someone who is a soul mate, okay, or a play mate, you have to get through your pain wall first. Usually, oh, it wasn't the right time for us, you know, or their, their daughter got in the way. It was a perfect relationship with their daughter sabotaged it or they had to move away. Think about it. I know the, the wheels are spinning here. Call it missed opportunities or I met this person and they just disappeared or I had this business partner show up or say they were going to buy a package for me and then their card didn't work. Because your defensive projection of your personality says I am rejection and I will reject you. At before you reject me because it thinks it feels it craves it desires and it manifests and it sucks <laughs> trust me because i'm like why am i doing this i'm literally sabotaging myself right here i can see it and that's the most frustrating part because you can see it all right all right so we're going to wrap for today but what I want your homework to be the next week, if you were able to hang this long, if you weren't, your pain body put you to sleep or your pain body did something. And that's cool too. Because, you know, there's always someone who falls asleep in my class because their pain body's like, you can't hear this. Or your phone starts ringing or something manifests. Because here's the thing. Pain is density. Density is physical. Physical is matter. Matter manifests into matter. It'll make you feel like you don't matter or this doesn't matter, or this, I don't I already know what she's saying. This is stupid. All right. Well, great. If, if, if this is not, if this doesn't make sense to you, or, it, or you already know this, then I hope that you're living this. I hope. Sh show me your workshop. I'll share it all over everywhere. Okay. Because I want this for you. The world needs more alive people who are not living behind pain. We cannot create anything sustainable in pain. We create and destroy. We create and destroy. We create and destroy. Or it appears that other people are destroying. But there is no one else. Okay? I'm going to leave you with this. Your abundance and freedom lie when you become the center of your universe. When you become the center of your universe. All right? We're going to start next week with questions. So have them ready. All right. We're going to go for it. I'm going to answer all of these questions about what is and what's not. But hopefully you took a picture of these three things and you realize that the separation occurs between the, between the three conscious net levels of your physical representation. And the fourth level of consciousness, which is the unconscious, is part of all of these systems. That's your lineage, your bloodline, your genetics, and your DNA, okay? Your emotions are going to be the soundtrack that put the character present, okay? Your pain body is on the front line defending and protecting your unworthiness, trying to prove its worth, okay? So take into consideration these three elements, 
Look around at the other pain bodies that you are. Last but not least, I want you to take a picture of your posture from the side. All right, I want you to look at it. If your head is even a quarter of an inch further than your chest, you're leading with your pain body. All right, if your head is back here and your heart is on the front line, you'll notice how uncomfortable that is if you have a big pain body. You'll notice that you can do this at home, but when you go outside, this is how you are. You've got to lead with your pain body. Guess what? Your head is heavy, creating more weight for yourself. You're also creating a vortex of counterintuitive connections in your heart chakra, which means you're sucking energy in. That empath inside of you is about to get real tired out there. We're going to talk about that next week. All right? So for now, notice your pain bodies, manifestations over the last three to five years. Notice the last three months of your own behavior. Okay, what it gets you excited, what feels like instant connections, where you feel hopeless, where you feel hopeful, and see if you can kind of do this inner work to at least figure out the personality identifications of all three of you. That's all we need this week. All right, next week, we're going to start with questions. We're going to talk about reposturing. We're going to be talking about opening and healing the root chakra. We're going to be talking about daily routine. Okay. Let's get to work and let's start tripping away your DIY version of this, all right? Now, if you're brave, come see me because I can do this in a week. I can get 47 years gone in a week, but you know, it's pretty hardcore. Otherwise, come see us in Ireland or Spain and we'll do it there with you, all right? Check it out. Thank you guys. And we will post our retreat information and our physical location. Um, on our website, which is already there, but if you have any questions about coming in and seeing us, let us know. Otherwise, I'll give you what I can give you that you can do on your own next week. All right. I'll see you guys soon. Bye. Okay. Whiteboard. All right. See you guys later. Bye.